Got one picked out right in front of me. And I'm going, I got him. That's a big fish, picked out a single. And if you can do it, that's what you want to do. And instead of casting to a group of fish, what I got to do now is really hold it high because we got a lot of coral out there. And I'm going to clear my line and get him on the reel. We really got to hold it high because we got a lot of coral out here. Boy, I cast that, that little bonefish special hit right in front of him and I got some coral. Yeah, yeah, the fish got me that time. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But that time the fish cut me off on coral. But it's still a thrill hooking him on that little bonefish special. I tell you what, you tie one, you can catch a bonefish on it too. It's a fantastic bonefish fly and you'll always want to have one in your fly box. There are several flies that I won't be caught on the bonefish flat without. Chico's bonefish special is one of these flies. Let me tell you some of the materials we're going to need to tie this fly. For a hook, we're going to use a 3407. Now if you want to use a plated hook, you can use a 3407. Or oh, there's a wonderful new hook, the TMCO 800S, that's just out also. We'll use orange marabou, body glass for the overbody. You can also use flat monofilament, mylar tinsel, crystal flash, calf tail, and grizzly hackle. For the thread, I'm going to use Flymaster. It's a 6 aught thread. You'll notice that I use fine thread on a lot of these flies. The reason I do that is that I can use more thread wraps make a stronger body or underbody and have less thread buildup. Wind the thread back to the bend of the hook shank. Come back forward to the area on the hook shank right behind the eye of the hook. We'll just leave enough room in there for the head of the fly. Okay, orange marabou. This is a blood feather. And we'll peel off and make a little cylinder out of about two-thirds of one side. We'll clip off the butt section. And we'll tie this down right on top of the hook shank. Now again, we want to leave the space for the head of the fly. Everything has got to be tied in at the exact position where we'll have a nice smooth body. Back to the bend of the hook again back to our original tie-in area. Now I always, instead of cutting marabou, I break it with my thumbnail. Makes a heck of a lot nicer ending on the marabou. And you can just pluck it out till you get it where you want it. There. It doesn't look like a toothbrush. and We don't want it to. What we'll do next is we'll tie in our body glass. Now to do this, we're going to place this exactly in the same position, but we're going to tie it in on the near side. Capture it with thread, hold it right on the side, and we'll tie back to the exact same area to bend the hook. And we'll come back just a little bit. Now we're going to reverse the thread. We're going to reverse the thread bring the thread back in the opposite position, clip off our loop, bring it back to the tie-in area, and we're going to put some pressure right here. Now the reason we're doing this is when we bring our body material forward, we want to be able to put tension on that where we get a nice overbody. Bring it up about half the hook shank, throw another loop, and reverse the thread back the way we started. Come forward, 
with the thread to our original tie-in area. We'll take tinsel, and this is about a size 12 tinsel. Lay it in on an angle. Two or three wraps. It doesn't make any difference because we're going to unwrap this when we get our tinsel back where it should be. Going rearward with the tinsel. We want that tinsel edges to lay right up next to each other. All the way back. Especially at the end, we want the uh, all the black thread to be covered with the gold. Back forward. When we get to our tie-in point, we'll unwrap our first tinsel. and tie it off with our left hand. Trim the ends of the tinsel. Want to get that thread out of the way when we're cutting that tinsel so we don't cut the thread. And here's the tricky part. With a little pressure, Wrap forward. With our overbody. Make it a real nice body. Come into our tie-in area. And we'll tie this off. Keeping our thread short. Now we'll lay this on the inside and tie it forward. This is real important to make a nice smooth head. Come in right behind the eye. Put a little drop of cement on the thread wraps. I use flex cement for almost all underbody. Reverse the hook and the vise, and we'll tie in the wing. First thing we want to do is we'll cut a little piece of calf tail um, on a size four, about a size of a uh, kitchen match. Now you'll notice some. I'm not going to stack this because again, I don't want a, a toothbrushy appearance. I'll take this short pieces of calf tail, pull them out, and we want about two times, one and three quarters to two times the hook shank length, tie it in on the underneath side or the top facing you, and wiggle it. Grab the butts and just wiggle it. What that'll do, that'll write the, the uh, calf tail right on top of the the hook shank, lift up on the butt section, and clip it off at an angle. Take three or four wraps, wrap it in, tie it in securely, and come back to the back of where the head's going to be. Okay, we'll cut about three or four strands of crystal hair. I don't want to put too much flash in here. Double it around the thread and grab the other side of your thumb and forefinger. Bring it up on top of the hook shank and just tie it in. Bring both of them together and we'll cut it off about the same length as the calf tail. Okay, let's tie in the grizzly wing. Uh, grab a couple of feathers. We don't want anything that's real wide. Put the tips together. 
and we'll cut these where they are a little bit longer than the calf tail. Bring your scissors right up behind the eye of the hook, cut them off, and we'll tie the first one on the near side and get that little grizzly fiber out of the way. And loose wrap to start out with. Tie it on the far side. Okay, tie them in. Tie a nice tapered head. Again, very little pressure toward the back of the head. Come forward when you got a nice tapered head. Whip finish. Always going forward where it'll tighten. When you pull on the tag end of the thread, snip it off. And the first coat, I always use Flexamen. And I'll finish it with a, a nice glossy head cement later. This is a bonefish special. Again, this is a fly that I will not be caught without on a good bonefish flat.